Here's what it looked like if I was wrong. Because my contention is they have, they have now are to the point, there aren't that many options. Your local 53, Washington, they've got to go do something. And the, the something right now is Ayuk. Maybe he's available, maybe he's not, but I have to find out. I've got to win this bidding. If he really is indeed available, and it's not just a negotiating ploy by San Francisco, if they're tired of the headache, can't imagine they would be, but if they are, they've got to do it. They should have been doing this the whole offseason, and they, didn't, they weren't interested. Here's what it would look like if I was wrong. Tell me what you think of this. It would mean Jahan Dotson has to go for what? 800 yards? Five, six touchdowns? Bonafide number two receiver? They're number three. Maybe it's a Luke McCaffrey. Probably has to do 450, 500 yards. You need pretty good production from Ertz or Sinnott. That tight end spot has to do what Logan Thomas that did and maybe then some. That's for them to be correct. How many ifs was that? Wasn't that a lot? Wouldn't you rather have something so dependable, even if it costs you a little too much? That's kind of the point here. 800-636-1067. So I invite you. We, this is a, an open forum. We like to have discussions here on this radio program. You're allowed to agree. And you know what else you're allowed to do? You can disagree. You can tell me that I'm wrong and full of it. And I welcome that. 800-636-1067. I think they got to make a move. Tony, D.C., what's up, buddy? Yeah, I have to say that you're wrong. I kind of disagree. I think we need to find out what we have in Jaden Daniels first. Because if we get Ayuk at $30 million for four or five years and then find out the quarterback's not good, then we just we tied into a lot of money into a wide receiver that doesn't have a quarterback. I think we should find out that we have a quarterback, then we can now go get a wide receiver kind of similar to what Philly did when they found out that Jay they had hurt was him. a good quarterback. Then they went and got uh, Antonio Brown. Thank you, buddy. A.J. Brown. I, I know who you meant, though. Um, so it's chicken or the egg. Should they have signed Terry McLaurin before they, quote, unquote, had a quarterback? To me, this, this, is the, this is kind of my whole, the crux of it. Every once in a while, you get the guy that was so transcendent, such a superstar, so good that none of this matters. And we now think of these Houston Texans wide receivers as household names. We, nobody was telling you Nico Collins is a superstar uh, or Tank Dell was a superstar before they were. Now we think of them as excellent. That's because they got C.J. Stroud. They nailed it with C.J. Stroud. That, that happens. That's lightning in a bottle. That's once every dozen years or so. You could, you could count them on one hand. Stroud, Herbert, a couple other guys. For everybody else, my point is when you go, let's see what we have. I want to really find out what we have. And I'm not going to not spend and see, can this quarterback overcome every obstacle I put in front of him? It's really hard to be a quarterback in the NFL. It's really hard. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible. I'm going to build him, this person, this player, into that star where then Pat Mahomes can afford to lose Tyreek Hill and go right back to the Super Bowl. Where Justin Herbert can afford to lose Keenan Allen and hopefully be really good still. Or if I'm, I got Aaron Rodgers, I can let uh, my excellent wide receiver walk or, or replace him with somebody else over the years, right? The Jordy Nelsons, Devonta Adams, whatever, and still get great production. You don't have that yet, or you know, I hope we do, but how could you count on that? My point is, I can't do another 2012. I can't do a 2012 season where Joshua Morgan is the number two receiver. Wrong. Don't do that. I can't do another uh, Dwayne Haskins rest in peace situation where I've got a young Terry McLaurin, and that's it. That's worth a damn at that position. And just say, well, he didn't do it. I'd, I'd love to give him a chance. I'd love to give him the best possible chance at success too much rides on it this isn't uh, the number two overall overall pick that's a defensive end whose job is to rush the passer where i've got to support him with three other defensive linemen a great coordinator two linebackers to cover if in case he's mediocre against the run no 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 this is the quarterback man that's my point garrett in arlington good afternoon man you're on the fan what's going on dan how are you good pal how are you I couldn't agree with you more, man. And I'm a commander's guy. Uh, I was born and raised and have been a Ravens fan for a long time. And I hear your argument, and I can't help but make comparisons. There's some parallels, right? Done with yeah. Lamar Jackson for mm-hmm. several years. It's parallel, man. I'm mean, now granted, Lamar was not a you know number two pick, but still, you look at you know 2018. You sort of what John Brown, Kylan Wallace, you know a bunch of nobodies. They went out. They got Rashad Bateman, who was supposed to be a hot guy. He went down and he was throwing like Willie Sneed, 
right? A bunch of, you know, guys who, who filled in. And now he's got Zay Flowers. You know, Mark Andrews is great. But you see what happens to the, uh, the Ravens in the playoffs when they figure out how to play a cover zero on him. They put a bunch of guys in the box. He's forced to throw. And they can't get past the Chiefs. They can't get past the Bills. You name it, what happens? They don't have a true number two receiver. They don't have anybody other than a Zay Flowers, who, by the way, you know, isn't always the guy they can count on. So I could not agree with you more that you got to go all out, get a receiver, help your young quarterback develop in this league, get him some confidence, and, and put him off on the right path. I mean, you heard that caller from D.C. a minute ago say, hey, let's see what we have first, man. If you just sunk all this draft cap and all this time into putting someone like James Daniels and you're not going to go all out to help him out, what are you doing? That's what where I'm you, at. Garrett, appreciate the phone call, buddy. The parallel, I think, is a really good one with with Lamar Jackson. Not just because the the quarterback comp where, where you know, you've heard Daniels and, and Jackson comp. I don't know how great a comp that is, but you've heard it. Baltimore gets this, by the way. Now, they haven't been successful. This has been their Achilles heel, I would argue, for a long time. They can't get the receiver position right. In the year they drafted Rashad Bateman, some guy named Amon Ross St. Brown went, you know, dozens of picks later. Like so they, They've tried everything they could think of, and they can't evaluate receiver up there. Baltimore does a lot right. That ain't one of the things. They're terrible at receiver spots. How many Demarcus Robinsons? How many Devin Duvernays? How many, uh, you know, Rashad Batemans who, who, who Garrett just mentioned? They're trying because they see it. They see the need. And it feels like Washington doesn't. And that's my frustration here. Uh, Kevin in D.C. Good afternoon, man. You're on the fan. What's going on, Danny, man? You're, I can't help it, but you're wrong again. Tell me why. Uh, we got Jahan Dotson, first rounder who had a great rookie season. He had a sophomore slump. There's potential there. We just expended a third round pick on Luke McCaffrey, who by all accounts sounds like he's going to be great. Uh, has already developed a rapport with, uh, with Daniels. You give those guys a chance to shine. And I'm going to use your argument on the Texans mm-hmm. to, to support mine, which is maybe Daniels can turn Dotson and McCaffrey into those household names. And most importantly, why give up draft capital? Why give up any capital for a guy who wants to be here? He'll be here next year. Let him figure it out. If he really wants to be a commander, we can have him be a commander next year. And we'll know where Jaden Daniels stands. We'll know where Jahan Dotson is and the rest of our wide receivers. And we'll take it from there. We don't have to give anything up for this guy. He wants to be here. Yeah, but thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. So here again, here's my contention. Here's my argument. You're just skipping ahead to another year. Counting on a C.J. Stroud lightning in a bottle moment ignores every other rookie quarterback. We're ignoring every, you know, for every C.J. Stroud, there's seven Mac Joneses. There's a dozen uh, Bryce Young stories, right? Like you can't just say, ah, it'll work out. Or maybe he turns him into that. I don't do maybe when it comes to this. Does that make sense? Again, it's a good call. I, I, I'm, I'm not ripping you. It, to me, it's just a different philosophical thing. I don't leave anything up to chance. Now, for McCaffrey, I like him plenty. He is a glorified fourth rounder. It's it's still called third round because it's added to the end of the third round. But pick number 100, if you can do some math, 32 teams, 32 picks per round, times three is 96. So he's a glorified fourth rounder. But it's it's listed as third round because that's how the conditional pick uh, type thing works. Okay? I don't do that. For every Terry McLaurin, there's a dozen, there's 7,000 Deami Browns where nothing ever happens, and I have to hear a lot about the guy. I would love for McCaffrey to be good. Again, I would love for this team to be right, for this front office to be right, because it would, it would mean that Daniels is thriving. I don't leave that up to chance, though. I don't leave it up to chance. Ayuk, who knows if he'll be here next year. He'll probably get franchise tagged, if, if I'm being honest. So you're two years away, then eh, maybe we'll get him at that point, and we'll just get somebody else. I, I don't have time for that. This is this season. This is the one. This is the year. In three or four years, if C.J. Stroud continues on this trajectory, which I, you know, I'm not doubting because what he showed his rookie year, yeah, you can make a tough decision and let a Tank Dell walk, or you can, uh, you know, not extend Nico Collins, or, or whatever you want to do, because you've got the dude. My point is, in order to achieve dude status, you've got to do everything possible, and not just go. I hope it's just like C.J. Stroud, because nobody knew, no one knew it was going to be C.J. Stroud, no one. Casey in Kentucky. What's up, man? You're on the fan. Hey, Danny. First time caller, uh, long time listener. Well, I certainly appreciate you. that. I am absolutely with you. Hit me, 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 hit
Yeah. Okay, he's done. Now you go. I am so tired of waiting. I've been a DC fan of all the sports teams for 30 years. I'm so sick of waiting. We keep this wait and see approach. We have a player that even if it's using as a bargaining chip saying that he wants to be here and he has a connection with our young quarterback, which would just further cement that we are behind that young quarterback, go get him. Do it. Casey, I love it. Appreciate it.